Uh, I'm Alec Faulkner. I'm a designer at Yacht Club Games. I am Sean Velasco, the director of Shovel Knight. So the big question that I want to ask is, where is my Netflix series? Uh, it's coming soon, I guess. <laughs> yeah, keep waiting. Uh, definitely, that's we want that to happen. If you know anyone, please send them our way. If you know anyone who can draw cartoons, that would yeah. be great. That'd be good. Netflix start. to give you money, and then you'll be like, okay. Yeah, stay tuned. Yeah, I mean, stay tuned. If that could happen, we would definitely want that to happen. The Castlevania series that's shown that like a game, oh like God, game yeah. series, game series is can be popular and they're well received, and we could do it. It would be great for that. They're on to something. Yeah, definitely. So what are you guys showing here at PAX West? We've got Shovel Knight King of Cards and Shovel Knight Showdown, the last two updates to Shovel Knight Treasure Trove, coming in December. Finally. That, yeah, finally. That and the Amiibos and the retail versions all be out in December. And in addition to that, we have Cyber Shadow, which we showed off a little bit at PAX East, and we've got Shovel Knight Dig, a brand new project that we're yeah. really excited about. Yeah, showed it off for the first time here. So you guys were a very successful Kickstarter crowdfunding. Are you guys almost cut up on all the goals? This is it. King of Cards and Showdown. That's it. Yeah, we knocked out Spectre of Torment and Body Swap. There was Plague Knight, Co-op. I think yeah, it's all and, in there. And, yeah, Battle Mode and King of Cards, and that's it. These are the last two expansions. I, that, I hope we didn't forget one. <laughs> we, did, I, we didn't. We've been working on these like for so long. I mean, the original Kickstarter was in March of 2013. Oh my god. So yeah, so we're like, we're I know, right? But everything is going to be finally done. It's going to be out in December. Showdown is looking like really amazing. We put down, or we put like so much more work into it than we thought we were going to, and it's like a, it's like a really cool full product. And King of Cards is the biggest shuffle night game yet, so it's an insane package. It's really good. What's it been like working on the the same IP for five years? Are you guys a little burnt out on it? I mean, Cyber Show isn't shuffle night, so is it nice to kind of branch off and work on a different IP? Uh, well, that one is more of a publishing effort, so we're not, you know, day in and day out working on that project. But it is really great to see something else uh, come to light that ain't Shovel Knight for once. Yeah, yeah, it's been a lot of fun to get into the publishing. Well, and with Shovel Knight Dig, it's a co-development between Nitrome and Yacht Club Games. So, like, to be able to work with them and to, like, share the Shovel Knight IP, to, like, see the new stuff come in, to work with Cyber Shadow and just like see all the cool improvements that are happening to the game and to help amplify everyone's message has just been like really cool. I, I can't believe like how giant this booth is and like how many games how many games we're showing and just like it's just such a it's a pretty gigantic crazy thing. You guys were a really uh, intimate team, you know, when you guys first did the Kickstarter. Now you've kind of just exploded with this IP and now you're getting into publishing. Does having a game development background help you in that in that area? Definitely. I think that's one of the strongest things that we can offer as a publisher is that we'll play the build and we'll give a lot of feedback and insight as to how we think like a game like this is supposed to be made. Right. And I mean, it's not that they always have to follow everything that we say, but hopefully that's what we can provide as Yacht Club. I mean, we're not the biggest, most giant publisher out there, but I think that we can provide that personal touch and I think the quality of the games is just really, really going to be good. Talk about Shovel Knight Dig. Where did the idea for this game come from? Because I, I feel it's obvious, but maybe it wasn't. Like, it, because it, it, the gameplay is amazing. Um, well, we thought maybe there should be a game where Shovel Knight digs. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and we wanted to make a game that had uh, that was. It's like more like eighty. It's more fast. Well, and I, I don't want to say I don't want to say like it's a roguelike, but it's like we wanted a game that you could have like a repeated experience. I'm like so into Spelunky and like we love like Crypt of the oh, Necro yeah. Dancer and like games like that and like s something where by doing the game perfectly you can find secrets and go off into new paths and it's like, there are whole parts of it that are just uncovered that you didn't even know existed. That kind of stuff. Something that is like something that you could replay a lot of times. A, a different kind of Shovel Knight game, like, aside, you know, from the main core game. That was much better than saying, it's the Dark Souls of Shovel Knight. <laughs> yeah. We have plenty of people that can say that for us.
So talk about your your battle game. Was that it? Was that a, that was a Kickstarter goal? But did you also do it because like you weren't in Smash and you were kind of upset? You're like, fine, we'll make our own Smash with Blackjack. Oh, we were delighted to be in Smash as an assist trophy. Um, it was always a Kickstarter stretch goal. For a while, it was just battle mode. But over the past year, it's really come into its own as a fully fledged four player multiplayer game. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. We play it at the office every day at 1 p.m. Showdown time. And we've been balancing it, playing as all the characters. I mean, not even the whole roster and all the levels are being shown right now, so there's still a lot more to show off. But it's just been fun. Uh, it was maybe a question if we'd be able to put together a fun four player multiplayer platform battling game. like. I don't know. We could obviously never make something as complex or deep as the Smash Brothers, but I think we managed to do something that feels true to Shovel Knight and like has good platforming, and you can still have like a one-on-one -on -one like battle that's like very serious. So it's like I don't know. It's just a lot of fun. I'm excited for everyone to get their hands on it and really play it. Who's the best at it uh, at, it at the office? Me. That's me. <laughs> Yeah. You go in and change the source code before you play. You're like, oh, I don't know how I'm winning so much. Yeah. <laughs> Alex, like, he's good at video games. <laughs> that's true. I dev that's good at video games. That's kind of cool. It's like a journalist who's good at video games is like super rare nowadays. So <laughs> we have to play so many of the damn things, you know? You gotta like play the game every day for like eight hours to be good at it. Yeah. And we gotta play ten games in a week. You know, it's not yeah, gonna we happen. Can play one game over and over again yeah. for years and years and years. Yeah. So I think we're all actually pretty good at Showdown. That's true. I mean. In the office, we're all the best showdown players in the world right now. I mentioned this. <laughs> I mentioned this earlier, but like, I really feel you guys have created a, a character base and just just a, a franchise that can withstand the test of time and be like Mega Man. You know what I mean? Like, people will know Shovel Knight and Shield Knight 50 years from now. What does that feel like? Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not sure that feels true. Yeah, but, <laughs> but I. <laughs> That I just expect our game won't sell it all, and then it does really well. I think when we work on it, yeah, the expectation is like, ah, like five people will play this. Let's not worry about that. Let's focus on like what we actually want to put into it. But Shovel Knight does have such a crazy, crazy huge cast of characters, and when you're working on the fifth in the series, it's a huge opportunity to dive in and explore the stories of a lot of the minor ones. In yeah. Showdown, there's a whole story mode for each one of the playable characters, character, too. Yeah, so just to be able to expand on everyone and like to get that flavor to every, it's just going to be really neat. I feel like going back to the Netflix series, if they yeah, give right. you money, you guys should do a sitcom. It, it, we're, we're, we're better as an animated sitcom. Well, what's the difference between an animated sitcom and an animated series? It's like Shovel Knight lives with Shield Knight, and then his neighbors like come over, and they have like real world problems, you know? Like, uh, okay, no, like remember, look, like no, like yeah, Dexter's Lab had that superhero show. Do you remember the Incredible Crop Van Halen's? Do you remember that show? No. Oh man. Oh, it was the the challenges of everyday life. It was superheroes having an everyday life. I'll play the clip of it over this so people can see what I'm talking about. I forget what it was called, but it was hilarious. Dude, it, I mean, if you're talking about like a Shovel Knight Seinfeld, I think that would be a slam That's dunk. That's right, like a Shovel Knight Frasier. Absolutely. Right. A 90s style sitcom with real world problems and a laugh track. Do you guys ever think that we get to this point where you guys have this, you guys really do have a gigantic booth. Yeah, and like you have- King, Kings of the Sixth Floor. You guys, <laughs> You guys have people coming to play your games. There's lines to play your games. You have amiibos now, oh, four amiibos. Like, talk a little, did you guys ever think that would happen when you were making your game? No. I mean, <laughs> that was the plan that ever since plan. Ever since Shovel Knight. Was a, like a big draw board and then amiibos at the end of the draw board. Well, we couldn't have possibly known, but the goal has always been bed sheets and cereal and cartoon <laughs> shows. And Shovel Knight was created to be like a, like a character that could cross over into anything, so. The further we can get into everywhere, the better. Yeah, ditto. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, what do you, what kind of uh, Shovel Knight merch do you want to see the most? Uh, Shovel Knight cereal would be my. Breakfast that would be the cereal. yeah. Breakfast cereal would be the number one. The shapes of little shovels and the marshmallows could be gems. Yeah, I mean, I think it would be like it would be like dirt, and there would be gems in there, and then you would get a spoon that's packed in that's like shaped like a shovel, yeah. and you would and you would dig it out, and like there'd be like marshmallow, marshmallow, gems in he's all the, the box. It says like dig in. He's yeah. got it. Oh going. my god, it writes itself. Yeah. Dig it. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are incredible. What, when is this gonna happen? We gotta make we gotta make this happen. We don't know any cereal people. I don't know how you find those people. Yeah. Kellogg's, reach out to Shovel Knight and Yacht Club Games. General Mills, come on, we're talking to you. <laughs>
So as you guys move over to publishing, are you tending to like it more than the development side of it? Or, I mean, or is it equally enjoyable? Uh, it's equally enjoyable. I mean, at heart, we're all still game developers and we want to keep working on our own games. But it's nice to be able to look at and help uh, other projects in a more limited capacity. Yeah. It's fun to jump in on something fresh and get that variety. That's like part of what makes it so interesting to work on all these games at once. And they kind of cross-pollinate each other as well. Without giving anything away that you're not allowed to give out, are there any game ideas you have in your head that you'd like to do in the future, whether it's Shovel Knight IP or something completely different? Yeah, a cooking game. That'd be fun. I want to do a cooking game. Those are really popular. We, we saw a cooking RPG last year where it's like you fan out and you get ingredients and you have to like fight for the ingredients. It was really intense. Yeah, just imagine all the fun characters running around. You could make like Beto soup. You could make bubble dragon stew. You'd okay. be like juggling it all. You'd have to like run across the stage. You could dig under the guys. And the puns are, like, are never ending, right? Yep. You could have so many puns. <laughs> they always, they always never end anyway. For me, in any shovel knight game, there's so many that we, that we've tossed around. Uh, I want to make, I want to make a shovel knight pinball game where every, where everyone, all the pinballs are beetles, and every beetle is like a, themed like a different shovel knight character. So there'd be like a shovel knight beetle, and a shield knight beetle, and an enchantress beetle, and then you would like breed the beetles, and then you would use them as pinballs in a pinball machine. I have to ask, since you guys were on so, you promised so many platforms at launch, like every platform known to men, did you guys ever fart around and make a Dreamcast port? Someone was talking to us about that one time. Oh, what, a Dreamcast? Yeah. Port? No, someone did make an NES version. Like, I mean, Shovel Knight can't really run on NES, but someone did a real NES, like, background scroll test with some of the art, and you could, like, have the character moving around. That was really cool, yeah. But it's like, it could never really work, yeah. When's the kart racer coming out? Kart racer? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> a, a long time. A long time. Long time. 2050. Yeah, that's still around. pretty realistic, yeah, honestly. Ask me, yeah, ask, ask me by then, by my life. Awesome, guys. So talk about, there's there's four games here. When are they coming out? What platforms are they going to be on at launch? Oh, man, that's a big question. That's a loaded question. You're like, shit, okay. Uh. Let's, if everything in Shovel Knight Treasure Trove, including the Amiibo, Shovel Knight Showdown, and King of Cards, is all coming in December of this year. Finally, Treasure Trove will be complete. December 2019, this year. Mark the words. Uh, Shovel Knight Dig is coming soon, but it's really just in the thick of development, so I wouldn't expect it for a pretty long time. And Cyber Shadow is also coming soon. We don't have a date, but it's coming along really, really well, and it should be done sooner than Shovel Knight Dig. And for Treasure Trove, uh, that update will come to all the consoles that it's already out already on, except with the exception of Showdown, which will not be on 3DS and Vita, right. just because it's a local multiplayer game, and it, it, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> Servers are expensive and complicated. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Maybe Showdown 2 could have online. 